stopwatch tonight using your eyes to measure your stress. Of course, this is one of the busiest times of year. Shopping, partying, parenting, working, all that multitasking takes a toll. Researchers at the University of Missouri have identified an objective way to measure just how stressed you are. Let me look at Dr. Malcolm Marshall's eyes. Clear. <laughs> you look good. You don't seem to be at stressed all. at all. No, I always love being on the couch with you, David. You relax me. Absolutely. But anyway, That's what I'm here for. <laughs> but we know <laughs> that we are living in increasingly stressful times, right? We're constantly running around, and so scientists wanted to come up with an objective way to identify when people are getting stressed out by okay. trying to juggle multiple tasks. So what they did was they simulated an oil and gas refinery control room, okay. and they had participants sort of look at two screens while reacting to unexpected changes like bells and whistles going off and alarms going off and they found that when people became more taxed their eye behaviors became more erratic and their the dilation of their pupil became abnormal. Huh. So they're hoping to use this to build a tool that employers can use to make sure that their workers are not getting overwhelmed, they're not getting fatigued, and to try to prevent them from making future mistakes, which as you can imagine would be really important in a factory or a hospital, for example. In that video, that one person, the close-up with the eye, they were yellow. That person was sick. <laughs> well, that's a different story. While kids are using mobile devices at an increasingly rapid pace, most parents say they're trying to monitor their kids' online activity, but researchers at the University of Michigan say parents spend more time talking with their kids about the mechanics of using the devices than they do about what their kids are actually watching. So that's kind of concerning. We're sort of just on there telling them, no, do this, rather than, hey, that's enough time. Right, or you know kids come to you all the time and they're like, the internet's not working, or I can't get it to turn on, or the volume's not working. That's what they sound like. <laughs> that's exactly what my kids sound like. But anyway, researchers studied 75 kids and their families, and they monitored their screen use while actually recording conversations in their home. Okay. I thought that was a little invasive yes, but they did and what they found was that there was actually little talk about what the kids were actually watching yeah. and when there was a conversation it was usually the kids the, that initiated the conversation and it often ended up in conflict sometimes negotiation often conflict the other interesting thing is that the older siblings were more involved in mediating what the younger siblings were watching than their parents That's true. were yeah. So they're saying, look, parents really do need to keep an eye on what kids are downloading and what they're watching, and that you really should use those privacy settings and the restrictions on devices before they get their own devices. Most parents who say, oh, he's just using it for educational purposes. Baloney. <laughs> it's a kind little built-in babysitter. Right? That's exactly. what it is. Dr. Malka, thank you so much.